Boss fans, it's time to take these some bitches down. That's right. The time has finally come for the Georgia Bulldogs to get their freaking asses kicked by the Tennessee Volunteers. That's right. And thanks to BVD, I have plenty of freaking Tennessee shit lying around. I can put on to support my Tennessee volunteers. That's right. I'm the freaking number one fan. And I got all this crap at the uh, bookstore where I went. Tennessee has the coolest bookstore. And they have this thing that looks like two in the pink, one in the sink. So I had to get it. I thought it was great. Anyway, the freaking Tennessee volunteers, baby. My Tennessee volunteers. Number one in the country. Man, this is freaking awesome. This is great. And yeah, I get to freaking cheer for Tennessee. You know why? Because I also have to cheer for Vandy and Auburn and all these other shitty teams. And yeah, Tennessee, pre-2022, I got to freaking cheer for them. So I don't want to freaking hear it this time, okay? Last year, when Alabama freaking beat Georgia and blew them out in the SEC championship, I had to hear from everybody that, uh, you're bandwagon, you can't cheer for that. Yeah, well, okay, it only, it goes both ways there, bud, because guess what? The freaking Georgia fans love to tell me, Sea Dogs takes two L's a week. Well, guess what? After my Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets kick the Virginia Tech Hokies freaking ass tomorrow, and my Tennessee Volunteers kicked a bulldog's ass in her own stadium, that is going to create what is known to Sea Dog as the Golden Game Day. And instead of Sea Dog taking two L's, Sea Dog will take two fat dubs in the morning. And it's going to be freaking awesome. I can't wait. The Golden Game Day is as, as it's referred to uh, by me and, and me only. You're not going to hear that anywhere else. You can't look it up. Uh, so that's what that's called for me. And unfortunately for Sea Dog, the Golden Game Day has not occurred since 2017. Uh, funny enough, we were play also playing Virginia Tech back then. And so now it has been a long time since I've experienced a Golden Game Day, and I can't freaking wait for it to happen tomorrow when my Tennessee Volunteers freaking take them out. And, you know, a lot of the Georgia fans get on to me for freaking cheering for other teams. Well, nobody else freaking cares except for you guys, okay? Nobody else calls me a two-teamer or whatever else. The fans that I freaking cheer for that are playing Georgia, they always welcome and accept and embrace Sea Dog support of their team. It's always a great time. This is how I freaking do college football, baby. I got a, I got a bunch of communities, and they freaking love to have me. Shout out to my Tennessee fans, man. I've been freaking chilling, uh, kicking it with you guys on here for a while. And guess what? It's been a long time coming. Tennessee fans has been one of the kindest freaking fan bases to me. And comment back wagon, whatever. Well, my wife's family, entire family is Tennessee fans. So there's your loose claim to Tennessee. Um, I'm not claiming them as my, as my team. I'm not doing that. But this week... I'm a freaking the biggest Tennessee fan you ever seen, okay? And, and I can be, because you know why? Because I've had to be a freaking Florida fan, South Carolina, Vandy, uh, Kentucky. I'll be next week. I'll be Kentucky next week. I'll be Kentucky next week and freaking Mississippi State. And then my jackets, of course. That's four losses on Georgia's schedules. How are they going to go freaking eight and four this year? That's crazy to me. The Vols are going to come into Stanford Stadium tomorrow and and <laughs> and expose Georgia. Finally. It's been two years, man. It's been two years since Georgia's been exposed. You know, you guys want to know something? Last year, during the, the year of the dog, there was no Tennessee. There was no Tennessee in the entire country. There was no there was there wasn't. Clemson, Oklahoma, 
um, freaking uh, what, whatever whatever else you want to say. Ohio State, they were they were all down. That's what it takes. That's what it takes for Georgia to win a freaking natty. It takes <laughs> forty years and an Alabama team that <laughs> to lose their entire skill position, all their best players, uh, for Georgia to ha have a shot at it. And unfortunately, they are just have all this talent of these all these recruits that they freaking tricked into coming to Sanford's freaking stadium in Georgia and tricked them into coming there. <laughs> Uh, so they're able to beat the likes of Vandy and Florida and just these awful teams with ease. So that's tough on Sea Dog. That's something that Kirby Smart has succeeded in there. Well, Kirby Smart and the areas that he succeeded, um, he has failed in a lot more areas. You want to know something? Georgia is not elite. They're not elite. Um, I, I, I thought that. I thought that last year after Georgia won the 90, I was like, oh, man, they're freaking, you know, they've reached the pinnacle. They're not going to be, you know, excited no more. Um, they're not going to be, you know, as stoked as one of the 90. Well, guess what? They freaking are. They want to beat Tennessee bad this year because they are looking at Tennessee and they're jealous of Tennessee because even last year, they didn't experience what Tennessee is experiencing now. And it is so funny how insecure the Georgia fan base is. It is so funny to me how how insecure they are. And they want to beat Georgia. They want to beat Tennessee so bad, man, I can't stand it. And guess what? It's not going to happen. So Sea Dog does uh, get to laugh again at the Georgia fan base. They think They actually think that they can win. They actually think that they can win. Kirby Smart's freaking amazing elite vaunted defense. It just doesn't stand a chance. It doesn't stand a chance when it meets a real offense, which they rarely run into. <coughs> but Georgia com likes to compare themselves to things such as 2019 LSU and freaking 2020 Alabama, you know, uh, Clemson. And there's those years when, you know, they, they want to compare themselves to the, the most amazing teams you've seen. And it's just, it's just not, they're just not at that level. <laughs> they, they can't beat elite teams like that. They just can't. They're still the same old Georgia. It's the world around them that has changed. The stars aligned. It was a full moon. And they freaking barely squeaked out a freaking Andy by the skin of their teeth. Okay. So I'm not impressed by that. And they're going to find out quickly. Georgia has fallen off this year drastically from <laughs> from their national championship run last year. Except nobody can tell because they've been playing these teams. They've been playing Missouri, which they barely freaking beat, by the way. They barely squeak by Missouri and think that they have a chance against Tennessee. They freaking turn the ball over 100 times a game. Stetson Bennett. Oh my God, they have Stetson Bennett at quarterback. And they think that they're going to be able to win a game against the number one team in the country after they've seen what they've done to Alabama. They've seen what Tennessee's done to Alabama. There are so many teams better than Georgia. It's not even funny. Except they're freaking playing, I'm telling you, they're playing South Carolina and shit like that. Are you kidding me? They just, they haven't run into this yet. There was no Tennessee last year. But there is this year, coming into Sanford Stadium. Think they have some kind of home field advantage? They don't! Between the hedges is a freaking overrated home field advantage, dude. They're nothing compared to Neyland Stadium. They're lucky they're not... They're, they're lucky. They're lucky they're not freaking playing in Neyland Stadium. Tennessee might put 100 on them. The Stanford Stadium is an overrated environment. I've been there. I'm not impressed. It's not that loud. You are outshined by so many other SEC teams, man. So many other SEC teams. Alabama, Tennessee, LSU, Florida. I mean, I mean, the home field advantage at Georgia is really nothing compared to those teams. So don't freaking give me that crap. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is a shame that this isn't going to be played in England. But I, the balls are going to blow out Georgia anyway. Georgia is does not. Georgia thinks they can coast by on these god awful teams 
Well, now they've got the misfortune of playing a real one. And they're not going to know what's hit them. They haven't faced the, any adversity at all this year. And <laughs> once it happens, people are going to be shocked at, at how bad it can get, at how bad Georgia actually is. They, they want to brag about how they have one of the top offenses in the country. Against what? How many times must I gesture? How many times must I gesture to the caliber of opponents on this hat rack? How, mu how many times? Do I need a gesture once more? I'll gesture once more. I gesture at the caliber of opponents that freaking Georgia. Yeah, you got a, a freaking you got the number what two offense in that country against Vandy. Uh, great job, great job. <laughs> Your Stetson Bennett is going to turn the ball over, and, and it's it's going to be a high pressure situation. They're going to let ninety thousand fans down in, in front of their stadium, and. Let me tell you, it's going to be at least it's going to be at least forty percent Tennessee fans there. You think they're not going to travel this game? It's going to happen. Stetson Bennett's a garbage quarterback, and guess what? Stetson Bennett is, is is going to be your quarterback as long as Kirby Smart is there. Well, wait, he only has one year of eligibility. This is last year. No, there will be a new Stetson Bennett. There was a Stetson Bennett before him. Remember Jake Fromm? Of these five-star quarterbacks you're bringing in, he's either going to start a walk-on or he's going to pick the worst one and and neglect the rest. You know it. You know this to be your future. You, Georgia fans, you will never, ever experience what Tennessee is getting to experience right now. You will never experience that. You will never get to see your team have an amazing offense. Georgia just doesn't have the capability. They don't. Okay? Tennessee, I'm so happy for you freaking guys. You are finally you are finally getting to experience the you know, the joy of watching your team be good after years of having to put up with dog shit. And that's something that I can only hope my jackets and I will be able to experience one day but until then i'm gonna be cheering for my freaking rocky top i'm gonna be cheering for y'all to go up there and kick kirby dumb in his dumb ass blonde hair sticking out the top of his visor ass okay what a sissy y'all see that video of him of him yelling at his players that they can't cover shit in practice how funny is that dude they're shaking in their boots the the team is the team is Kirby Smart is scared. Kirby Smart knows what he's going up against, and you can see it in his pressers. He he he's <laughs> he, he, he listen to him in his pressers. He's like, man, nobody can stop that offense. You know, there's there's very few teams that can stop that offense. Well, Georgia's not one of them. They're scared, and Georgia fans are scared too. And if they're not scared, that's because they're too dumb to understand. They're going to understand tomorrow at 3.30 when the Tennessee Volunteers come into Sanford Stadium and whoop that ass! Falls by 50!